just the addition of Kyle Lowry, I think, is definitely going to lean into this team's strengths and also help this team's weaknesses. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of NBA Now. I'm your boy Dom, and we're gonna get right into things here today. So, today, 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 we are talking about Kyle Lowry and the Miami Heat. Um, and you know, I think that this team has a lot of potential this upcoming season. Now, there's definitely some depth concerns with this team, but um, kind of the reason I wanted to kind of talk about this team today was. Um, you know, when we look at what they did in the preseason a couple days ago for their first game, um, Kyle Lowry came in and he played super well, right? Um, now, obviously, you know, he had five points and four rebounds or whatever, but what was really um, eye-opening was his assists, right? He had seven assists in only 14 minutes of play. Obviously, it's a preseason, so everything's a little overreacted. But um, it just, I mean, he was super solid for him and just brought an element to this team that I just don't think that they had um you know previously i don't think i think you know he fits super well culture wise and um just works super well for this team and like i've already made a video on bam out of bio i think bam out of bio is going to be have a super strong season this year um you have one of the best shooters in the league in duncan robinson you have you know a top 20 top 15 player in jimmy butler and then um you know, you picked up, you, you've got some, you know, other underrated guys on the roster, right? You've got, no, I think P.J. Tucker is probably pretty fairly rated at this point, but you've got P.J. Tucker, a super solid defender and, you know, a good corner shooter. Um, you've got Tyler Hero, who his potential is kind of up in the air, but at this point, he's a decent player. He's going to be, you know, kind of a crucial piece for you off this bench. Um, you've got another great guy in kind of um, in Morris. And then, um, you know, if Oladipo can kind of do something this season we'll see you know what he kind of does from off the bench and all that um potentially he maybe um you know later in this season if he's playing super good maybe takes pj tucker's starting role kind of starts at the two and you move um jimmy down to the four right and you kind of play a little bit more of a small ball lineup but um you know i think the roster construction is super decent um for this team and although I think that the three years for Kyle Lowry is a bit much, um, obviously to get him in the sign and trade, um, I believe you need three years on a contract to be able to sign and trade it. So makes sense. Um, I think it's a little bit much for how much he's making, but I think he'll be super good for this team. And honestly, this team is a dark horse contender to win the NBA championship. Um, now, obviously, you know, when you think about NBA championship, you think about you know, you think about Brooklyn Nets, you think about Los Angeles Lakers, you might throw in the Warriors in there now. Um, and I think the Miami Heat are right there. Um, obviously, Milwaukee Bucks and Phoenix Suns are in there as well. Um, but I think the Miami Heat are right in that conversation with the additions that they've made to the roster, you know, and um, this was a team that um, last year, I want to say... I can pull up the stats real quick. Last year, without Kyle Lowry, right, um, they were not a great points per game team. But Kyle Lowry's going to speed up the pace and help you score a lot more points. So, in, you know, you're going to go from the 25th points per game team and you're going to rise quite a bit in that. Um, and that should be super helpful. And then if he can kind of, you know, kind of push that premises across the rest of the roster hopefully that bench unit although not quite as talented as some others in the league um you know with tyler hero and with um victor oladipo can kind of match that offensive production off the bench hopefully um but yeah i would definitely expect for their uh, their points per game and their offensive rating to go up and there's no way that they're you know 18th in offensive rating 25th in points per game again this year um, and this was already a super good defensive team where you just got a better defensive guard. So um, that's probably only going to make you better. I mean, this was the team that allowed the fifth least amount of points per game last season and had the seventh best defensive rating in the league. I expect 
probably both those to go up. This can easily be a number one defensive team in the league, and um, I mean, I think that's pretty simple and easy for them to do. Maybe not easy, but um, you know, you've only really got one hole, and that's Duncan Robinson. Um, now, you're not quite as switchable as some other teams, and again, you don't quite have the depth of some other teams, but just alone, all three of your star players are soup are more known for their defense than their offense. Kyle Lowry, more known for his defense than his offense. Um, Jimmy Butler, more known for his defense than his offense. Bam Adebayo, more known for his defense than his offense. And then with guys like P.J. Tucker and, um, you know, Morris and all these other guys kind of on the bench and stuff um, that, you know, are going to have that mentality um, is going to help, you know, keep that when some of those main guys aren't on the court. Right, even Oladipo when he was um, at his peak was a pretty decent defender. If he again, it'll he's a very he's the X factor for this team. I think every championship team has an X factor, or championship caliber team has an X factor. Um, last year for the you know championship championship team, the Milwaukee Bucks, Drew Holiday was essentially their X factor. Right, you Drew Holiday or Chris Middleton, you can kind of pick out of the two. Um, we knew what Giannis was, right, and Giannis did his thing, but. Drew Holiday was able to just absolutely eat guards alive on the perimeter all throughout the playoffs. Um, and then Middleton being able to be their closer. So one of them was their X Factor, right? Um, when you even go back another year and you look at the Lakers, right? Um, now, you don't put the asterisk on it. I'm not even going to talk about that today. But when you look at, at the Lakers, right? Um, their X Factor was Anthony Davis. Um, and although a star player on the team he was still an x-factor because um we'd never seen him win at that high of level and what he was able to do especially late in the playoffs um you know he game winner against the nuggets just super strong performances all throughout the playoffs um he was kind of their x-factor and i mean again last year in the finals the phoenix suns if they would have won it um your X Factor was probably Mikel Bridges, right? Now, sometimes the X Factor is a star player on the team, like, um, you know, like a Chris Middleton or a Drew Holiday, and sometimes it's a guy that's, you know, a little bit further down the pecking order um, in that Mikel Bridges. Now, they didn't end up winning it, but he was able to really step up in the playoffs and um, help them a lot to get there. Um, and now, when you look at this Miami Heat team, I think Victor Oladipo is definitely that guy, um, you know, a former All Star player, and can. I think if he can stay healthy, can turn that back, turn the clock back, and definitely do that. Um, especially next to a guy with potential on the bench um, in Tyler Hero, and not having to be that you know um, starting super good shooting guard. Um, with that not being the ex expectation of him coming into the season, if he, I would expect him to blow away expectations for the most part because um, this is just a guy that you're going to see kind of come out and. Um, work his way into his role he's trying to earn a new contract um where he's not just going to be making two million dollars coming off of an all-star season a few years ago um and so you know i think he's gonna have a bit of a chip on his shoulder and even you know as a backup big um Dwayne deadman isn't terrible right he's a guy that maybe can't space it as much as we thought when he was in atlanta but um you know a good defensive and a solid veteran big um to have down there and then um you know you have some interesting guys like a gabe vincent or max stress that did interesting stuff we'll say last season and then um personally i haven't seen omer whatever his last name is play uh, but um i've heard that people like what they've seen from him so you know you've got some guys down there um obviously uh definitely a very cultured team and just the addition of kyle larry i think is definitely going to lean into this team's strengths and also help this team's weaknesses um which is all you can hope for in a free agent signing slash um uh, player brought in through the trade, right? I think that's all you can hope for is to, you know, build on your strengths and um, try and limit your weaknesses, which is definitely something he have done this last offseason and I think done to a decent degree. So, yeah, I know this is going to be kind of a shorter video, but really just wanted to talk about how I think the Heat definitely have a shot to be a dark horse contender in the NBA this season. Um, tomorrow, I will be looking at another dark horse contender um potentially for um a super maybe not a championship but a super high seed 
in the NBA. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Um, like and subscribe if you guys want to see that. If you guys enjoy, make sure you guys drop a like, create the support, and uh, yeah, um, I should be having award predictions and um, standing predictions coming out here pretty soon. So everybody. Have a great extra day. It's been your boy Dom, and this has been NBA Now. Peace out.